Asia's growth model must change. This was the resounding message from the region's economic leaders at the Asian Development Bank's annual meeting in Hanoi this week. As Asia's financial leaders return home, they're left with the challenge of how to sustain the region's growth miracle in a way that doesn't just rely on exports to the West. Asia cannot depend too much on external demand anymore to sustain its own domestic momentum. Asia's spectacular rise in recent years was founded in part by selling cheap goods to the West. But since the financial crisis, those consumers, especially in the United States, are in the doldrums and are likely to remain so for years to come. Asia must now look to new sources of demand. One way to do this is to increase trade and investment between developing regions, a trend which is already well underway. Actually, it's happening very rapidly. You know, if you look at the uh, South-South trade volume, it was about uh, 7 percent in the 1990s. It's already 17 percent these days. Right. And there are rapid increase of the South-South trade and investment. Asia's leaders must also look to raise living standards and boost the purchasing power of their own consumers. For now, the region's policymakers are preoccupied with the fight against inflation and the challenge of managing capital flows amid mounting uncertainty about the direction of global monetary policy. We are quite mindful that the flood of capital that is coming our way could easily reverse. Ultimately, realigning policies between developed and emerging nations is the only way for Asia's long-term vision to be realized. What's inevitable is that Asia is on the verge of a new era of slower growth. But how it manages that transition will determine the fate not only of a vast and growing population, but of the world economy itself. Tamar Ahmed, Emerging Markets, Hanoi.